Greetings, it's January 23rd, and uh, if you were familiar with the book Tuesdays with Maury, these are weekends with Search for a Nonviolent Future, and this is Saturday, January 23rd, and we are allowing ourselves the luxury of moving very slowly through Search, and we're in Chapter 1, and I've been talking about the way that people promote violence in the mass media and don't notice they don't draw connect the dots when violence occurs uh, when there's a suicide or a massacre or whatever nobody looks at the causal factor because a people don't believe that we actually have a mind that controls our behavior that's part of our worldview right now that was not in search by the way but b um in the old model of the human being, all this violence just seems inevitable. And if it feels good and it's profitable, go ahead and use it. And I quote from uh, Wendell Berry, who is a very uh, well-known social commentator and farmer. And he says, this is not childish, this idea that we are ignoring the violence the when we create it. It's not even, quote, human weakness. It is a kind of idiocy, but perhaps we will not cope with it and save ourselves until we regain the sense to call it, quote, e evil. And uh, my comment on this is, okay, this is possibly playing with fire, because for one thing, the moral framework is uh, today not very useful in analy analyzing and solving problems. And secondly, it's all too easy to slide over from calling something evil to calling people evil. And where this has recently become poignant is in the case of terrorism. You know, as a friend of mine said, terrorism cannot be condoned, but it can be understood. If you say that terrorists are evil, you put them beyond the pale of understanding. So let's look into that a little bit further. How exactly are we to understand violence on the one hand and why it is that as a culture, we seem to be almost deliberately obtuse about the simple fact that we're causing it in our cultural background. Till tomorrow then, thank you very much.